to the Payne and Pierce Moving Picture Show. My name is Ant Payne. And my name is Robert Pierce. Now, some of you uh, may recognise us from the podcast that we do, the Payne and Pierce podcast. The Payne and Pierce podcast, oh, which is available through our words. website and on Facebook and Twitter. It's been very, very well received by you, the general public. So thank you very much. And we thought you deserved the opportunity to see our faces because one of us is beautiful. Oh, thanks, Rob. So, we decided to do, uh, with our YouTube channel that we've been posting stuff on from the podcast, and with the YouTube channel we had, we thought we'd do a, a, an, an elongated, <laughs> an elongated video for you guys to check out. <laughs> it's so ugly. It's not what new, is it? Uh, so. This is the Pain and Pierce podcast, which will end, uh, not the podcast, the, the moving picture show, but like the podcast, it will end with us doing a story time. We'll have, we'll have different sections of the show to show you, and so to show a lot there, and uh, different things and bits and bobs. What's wrong? It's going to basically be like an amazing television programme. What, like The X Factor? No, it's, no, it's not going to be like The X Factor. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like... Um, What's something that's really popular? Ooh, Game of Thrones. No, no, not Game of Thrones. Da, 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 da. No, no, there's not going to be any any violence or scenes of a nature that you should not be watching. Yeah, definitely <laughs> not. Which reminds me, I must record it. <laughs> but no, it's going to be like like the two Ronnies. What's that? Well, that's, that's a comedy show, isn't it? Okay, so it's just us two doing funny stuff. Yeah, being funny. Why don't you just say that? It's us two doing funny stuff. Well, because you said it really well. I was trying to be erudite and intelligent and make references that everyone would understand to give a really good, broad sense of the type of show you can expect from us, Payne and Pierce. You an idiot. So let's start off with our first thing we do. Now, in the podcast, we do a thing called Challenge Rob and Ant. The CRA Challenge, you see. We call it the CRA Challenge because it stands for Challenge Rob and Ant. Uh, and a lot of these challenges we've done have been basically eating challenges. So, we thought, well, let's not change the system and do our first challenge, Robin Ant, which is most likely going to be an eating challenge. Oh, because I'm a fat idiot, am I? I didn't say that. No, that's what you were leading up to. You've already called me an idiot. May as well just call me fat whilst you're at it. All right, fine. Our first challenge is an eating one because Rob is a fat idiot. <laughs> So, here we are. This is the challenge, Rob and Ant, and the challenge today is to eat as many butterfly cakes as we can within two minutes. Now, there is going to be a catch. It's easy. Ah, that's what I was worried about. Put your hands away. Because the catch is, we are not going to use our hands. We can only use our mouths, maybe our noses. What? Okay. So, we've got two minutes. Right, so you... Press, press start then. <laughs> hey, make, use your hand for this one. So I can use my hand? Only to press start and then your hand has to go away immediately. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Official adjudicator, are you ready? I am. In that case, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Thank you. 
three capes left. <laughs> One, two, two and a half capes left. Wait. One, what, half? No, I've got two capes left, really, haven't I? How did you do that? I just put my head right in like that. And I was winning. So, you've lost. Yeah. Fine. Now, there is a forfeit. What's the forfeit? Well, the forfeit is <laughs> that I am just going to do this. <laughs> that is the forfeit. So, that was the first Pain and Pierce Moving Picture Show Challenge Rob and Ant, and I am victorious! Well, I know, you can eat more than most people, so obviously you're going to win that one. Well, I've well, been cheated <laughs> <laughs> and didn't win. Well, I didn't realise you cheated, otherwise I would have um, slowed down. Hmm. Uh, now, listen, we need to introduce you to the third member of Pain and Pierce. The and, if you will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also the hand <laughs> because yeah hands a hand yes so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls animals and pig farmers whoever's watching uh, let us introduce you to dizzy the dragon where, uh, where is he did you, did you tell him we were doing this today yeah i said make sure you're there i know what the problem is what's up well you see dizzy the dragon he is a bit of a diva. When he's not called the dragon, we call him Dizzy the Diva. Mm. He likes a lot of attention. Oh, so what I think is. we need to do, actually, is get everyone who's watching to shout out Dizzy as loud as they can. Yeah, that would annoy people sitting in a room with him as well. Exactly. They'd be like, what on earth are you doing? And then everyone will have to start watching with you. So after three, we want you all to shout Dizzy as loud as you can. Here we go. One, two, three. Dizzy! Well, that should have worked, actually. I don't, think, I don't think they did it loud enough. No? We'll do it again. Alright. Even louder this time. Make sure that the, your brothers and sisters can hear you upstairs. Here we go. Up three. One, two, three. Dizzy! Wow! <laughs> this is Dizzy the Dragon. Hi, Dizzy. Hello, everyone! <laughs> uh, Dizzy, uh, you've got a very interesting voice. Yeah! You've got a bit of a, bit of a sore throat going on today. A little bit, yeah! A, a what, a bit? A little bit. Oh, your pardon. No, he said a little bit. Oh, and a little bit. Oh, I see. Yeah. What? Do, have, you, have you used some strepsils? Oh. Sucked on some sweets? Well, yeah, actually. <laughs> I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment. So I did have a throat lozenge. And that way, that they've got... Oh, stop it. What are you doing? I can't do ventriloquism very well. Yeah. I'll show you how to do it. Go on, then. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Zilli Aron. How are you? Well, that, that's rubbish. No, that was really good. That was my drunk ventriloquist. Well, it wasn't very good. You've been drinking too many bottles of gear. <laughs> this is how you do it, Eddie. Right. Hello. <laughs> my name is Dizzy. This is Dizzy the Dragon, right? And every once in a while, Dizzy comes out with us when we do live shows and when we do parties and stuff. And Dizzy uh, is going to get involved in the uh, the Payne and Pierce moving picture show, aren't you, Dizzy? Yes. Fantastic. But I, I imagine uh, for some of it, Dizzy, you might like to mime. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might be the. Yes. Right. So, well, it's. <laughs> Hi, Dizzy. Hi. Nice. It's nice to see you, Dizzy. Um, why don't you and get re go and get ready for the next segment? All right. Everyone say bye, Dizzy. Bye, bye Dizzy. Dizzy. Here I go. Oh, oh did you see that? It's that's flying. amazing. A real oh. flying dragon. Next thing you know, he'll be breathing fire. I can't do that. Well, I still don't see why we couldn't use the bus. Because we can't afford the bus. But what we need is a money-making scheme. But how are we going to make money? Hmm. 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 Oh, I've got an idea. What? Well, 
Did you know there's an echo around here? What? There's an echo around here. Oh, there's an echo around here. <laughs> no, no, that was me. What? No, 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 that was me. Oh, there it is again. No! I mean, we pretend that there's an echo around here so that we can make money out of people. But how are we going to make money out of people by pretending there's an echo it's here? It's easy. You hide behind the tree and then everything I say, you say. Right. Everything I say, you say. No, everything I say, you say. Oh, everything you say, I say. Get it? Got it. Good. Let's have a practice. Okay. Here you go. <clears throat> Hello! Hello! How are you? I've got a bit of a bad back, no, actually. No, no! What are you doing? What? Everything I say, you say. Yes, everything I say, you say. No, everything I say, you say. Oh, everything you say, I say. Get it? Got it. Good. Let's have another practice. Off you go. <clears throat> Hello! Hello! How are you? How are you? Can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. I'm just no, the tree. no, no! Everything I say, you say. Yes, everything I say, you say. No, everything I say, you say. Oh, everything you say, I say. Get it? Got it. Good. Now, no. Oh, oh here comes somebody. Our first victim, right? Let's do this for real. Off you go. Get up, get up, get up. <clears throat> Hello, Rob. Oh, hi, Charlie. How are you? What are you doing here by yourself? Well, I'm just feeling a little bit concerned because I think there's an echo around here. There's no echo around here. Well, I bet you five pounds that there is an echo. Okay, then. Five pounds. Uh, right. Watch this. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oompa oompa! Pick it up, you jump! Whoa! Oh, right, see you later! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Come on back! Oh, what? I would like to have a go. Uh, fine, but it will cost you another five pounds. Okay then, another five pounds. <clears throat> Hello! Hello! How are you? How are you? Come and get me! You must be joking! <laughs> Would you like to drink champagne out of my slipper? Would you like a slap round the face with a kipper? <laughs> I know where! I know where! You can get! You can get! Two free tickets! Two free tickets! To a One Direction concert! What? I love One Direction! Oh, you, you come no, out! Why? Now this part of the Pain and Pierce Moving Picture Show is called Rob Goes Slow-Mo. As you can see, Rob isn't here. That's because Rob is in the slow-mo zone, which is the garden. And today, I was thinking, to celebrate the first edition of the Payne and Pierce Moving Picture Show, we should make a cake. So we're going to make a cake on Rob. In slow-mo. So the first ingredient in our slow-mo cake mm -hmm. uh, is egg. So that's good. Let's start off with an egg. <laughs> really? Yeah, go on. So, hmm, the egg is done. What else do you need? Ah, flour. Yes, flour is the next ingredient in our slow mo cake. What? Yep, here we go. Ready? now isn't it? Maybe a little touch of water. Our final ingredient is a dash of water. <laughs> oh, we're making I, the cake not bread. I need to go up higher and go on the stool like that. 
I'll take the spoon out. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And that's how you make the slow-mo cake on Robert Pierce. <laughs> and now you stick him in the oven for about 20 minutes until he cooks up into a lovely big fluffy cake we can all enjoy. <gasps> One of the things that we do in the podcast, which you can listen to at painandpiercepodcast.co.uk, is a story time. We like to tell stories. Absolutely. Um, and we thought it'd be nice that we could tell one of the stories on the Pain and Pierce moving picture show. On this one, right? Uh, uh, so, I think uh, this one, we're going to do... Well, tell them. I'm trying to tell them. What story are we going to do? We're going to do Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, Jack and the Beanstalk! Welcome to story time. Story time. Today's story is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Ooh. And I will begin. Okay. Oh, that's handy actually. Right, get rid of that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, cool. Once upon a time, there was a handsome lad called Jack Trot. I'll be that. Oh, hello, I'm Jack Trot. <laughs> <clears throat> he was strong, good looking, oh. and beautifully bald. Yeah. <laughs> Did you write this? Yeah. Good, because nobody is beautifully bald. His shiny head was the talk of the town, and all the ladies wanted to be his girlfriend, but were too shy to say anything to him. Probably. Jack lived with his strange, ugly, grumpy, and slightly farty mum ah. in a... Ah. Why do... Why... <laughs> oh! Ah. What? Why are you being a camp parrot? I'm not really good at pretending to be a woman. Well, I'm quite experienced at playing the pantomime dame, so shall I be the mum? Okay, you be the mum, right. I'll be Jack. <clears throat> in that case, um, Jack lived with his five foot ten, rugged handsome and incredibly intelligent mum in a cottage in a clearing in the woods. Jack and his mum didn't have any money mm. and were really struggling to make ends meet. So one day, Jack's mum said, Now, Jack, my handsome son. Yes, mum. We just haven't got enough money, so I'm afraid we are going to have to sell our beloved cow, Daisy. What? Not Daisy. She's not just our cow. She's like my best friend. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. There is no choice. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm crying. Oh, blimey. So the next day, Jack took Daisy to the local market. Oh, um, <clears throat> We haven't got a cow. What do you mean you haven't got a cow? You knew that we were doing the story today. I t what about Dizzy? Did the dragon? Dizzy, Dizzy, Daisy, Dizzy, Daisy, it works, it works. Okay, fine. Joe, so start again. Right. So the next day, Jack took Daisy the Cowragon to the local market. Come on, Daisy the Cowragon. Ooh. Moo. <laughs> but on his way there, he bumped into a strange old man who was obviously from the West Country because he had an accent like my Auntie Lola from Cornwall. Uh, yeah. God, that's, that's not actually my Auntie Lola, that's, that's his. Yes, yeah. he wrote the story. He said, What you got there, my man? Oh, well, this is my beloved cow ragon, Daisy. I've got to take her to market so I can sell her. Well, it just so happens that I need a cow. I will take her off your hands and pay you with a bag of magic beans. And pay you with a bag of magic beans. That's all I had. <laughs> this is going very well so far. What? Magic beans? Well, that sounds amazing. You will take good care of da Daisy, won't you? Yar. Thank you, my lad. 
Come on, Daisy. Let's get you to McDonald's, eh? Old McDonald's? Or... Oh, that's all right then. Bye-bye, Daisy. So, Jack rushed home with his bag of magic beans with a smile on his face Whoa. and his heart beating a happy tune. <laughs> when he got home, his mum greeted him at the door. <laughs> Jack! Jack! My wonderfully handsome, charismatically bald son! How was your trip to the market? Did you sell Dizay the Dracar? <laughs> well, Mum, I didn't even have to get to the market because I met an old man on the way there and I sold D Daisy the Dragon to him. Well, that is strange. How much did you get for her? I got some magic beans. Beans? Beans? Yeah, I'm not just beans, Mum. Magic beans. You sold our beloved Kraken for magic beans? Mm. There is no such thing as magic beans, you stupid, good-looking... <sighs> Sorry about this. Idiot. <gasps> With that, she threw the beans away into the garden. <gasps> and stormed off to bed and fell straight to sleep and snored an angry snore. What? It's not an angry snore. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I heard that. Okay. Jack felt bad Ooh. and went off to bed to feel asleep. No, <laughs> Jack felt bad. No, Jack felt bad and went to bed to fall asleep, feeling very sad and stupid. Ooh. That night, something magical happened. The beans that Jack's mum threw into the garden started to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And grow. That night, oh, done that bit. The next morning, Jack and his mum woke up and looked out into the garden. Jack's mum said, That is strange. I don't remember putting a giant beanstalk in the front garden. <gasps> mum, it must have been those magic beans. They've grown into a beanstalk that is so high into the sky that you can't even see where the top ends. Then what are we going to do with a giant beanstalk in the front garden? Hmm. Jack and his mum thought about things they could do with a giant beanstalk. Hmm. Make the biggest bowl of bean soup? No. Bean jewellery? No. no. Then they decided that the obvious thing to do with a giant beanstalk in the front garden that goes so high into the sky that you can't see the top is to climb it. What? Obviously. Oh. Dangerous. Oh. Stupid. Oh. So Jack climbed the beanstalk high into the sky, past the birds singing, and through the wind blowing in the clouds. When he was in the clouds, he couldn't see much, but as he climbed out to the top of them, the strangest thing beheld his vision. Beheld his vision? Yes, beheld his vision. What do you mean, beheld his vision? He saw something strange. Why don't you just say that then? All right. When he climbed out to the top of the clouds, he saw something strange. That's better, well done. <clears throat> Jack saw a massive castle in the clouds. Oh God. Get the castle, get the castle. And a path that led to its door. Oh. Do the path, where's the path? Yeah. So Jack disregarded any bit of scientific facts about clouds being a non-solid gaseous forms and jumped off of the beanstalk and walked along the path to the massive, and I mean really massive castle, <laughs> with a drawbridge. When he got there, he was able to slip under the door. Oh. Get the door. So, sorry, I'm in. Okay, you're in. At which, which towered above him, and when he got inside, the stranger sound beheld his ears. Beheld his ears? Sorry! He heard something strange. <laughs> he could hear a noise that sounded like thunder rolling through the valley and the sound of a gale force wind chasing it. <laughs> slow down, slow down! I can't catch up! I can't catch up with the gale force wind! I don't go as fast as thunder rolling! <laughs> he then saw what was causing the sound. A giant! Ooh. A gino... A gino... A gigantic... A gigantic, ginormous giant... Go ahead, well said. ...was asleep sitting at his kitchen table slumped in the chair. Oh, I'll be the, I'll be the giant. You be the giant. We need Jack. We need the Jack. Ah, here he is. Look at his Jack. His bald head. Like that. Can you, can you see Jack there? Yeah. 
very poor. They couldn't even afford clothes, you know. There we go. Splat. <laughs> then Jack heard another sound. A beautiful sound of music and singing. There, in the front of a giant, was a golden harp oh. whose strings were playing uh, themselves. No, a beautiful stop, stop, golden stop, 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 harp. Stop, 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 stop. The most stunning thing you've ever seen. No, no, no. I, I haven't got a harp. Uh, all I could find was a ukulele. Okay, um, there in front of the giant was a midnight blue ukulele Ooh. whose strings were being strummed by, them. by themselves. The decoration of the harp was that of a beautiful lady. Ooh, beautiful lady. <laughs> and as Jack looked closer, he could see that the beautiful lady was in fact moving and was the owner of the gorgeous voice that was singing the giant to sleep. The rock of the hill, the tree the river goes in the river. Yeah. Jack thought to himself that a magic singing harp would make people travel for miles and pay to see it if he owned them all. If he owned. People would travel for miles and pay to see it. And if he owned it, then all of his and his mum's money problems would be over. Mm. He silently climbed up onto the table. Oh, silently. Shh. And when the harp saw him, she stopped singing and said in her beautiful, melodic voice, Who are you? Uh, uh, I'm Jack. I'm Jack. And I'm here to rescue you and take you back to my house. But I belong to the giant. I sing him songs to help him sleep. And when I stop singing, he wakes up. <laughs> Just then, the giant gave a splutter and a cough and woke from his slumber. Ah. And then he said, Fun, fire. Fo fee harp, why aren't you singing at me? Then he saw Jack running from the table with the harp in his hand and slipped under the door. Get the door, get the door. Uh, yes. Yeah. Everyone's in. Fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. I'll grind his bones and squash his head. I'll crush his heart to make my bread. The giant got out of his chair and started chasing Jack towards the beanstalk. Mm. Towards the, get the beanstalk, beanstalk. Oh, God. Jack climbed down as quickly as he could with the giant closely behind him. When Jack got to the bottom of the beanstalk, he called for his mum. Mum! Oh, mum! Mum, quick, fetch me the sword so I can chop down the beanstalk. Coming, Jack, so she reached for the sword, gave it to Jack, yes. who passed here the harp. Oh, God, here's the harp. And he started, where's the lady? Okay, she's there. And he started cutting down the beanstalk. Oh, cut the beanstalk down! Cut the beanstalk down! Don't beat the beanstalk! Fum, five, fo, fee, this beanstalk's getting wobbly! And with that, the beanstalk came toppling to the ground. And so did the giant. Splat. The giant was dead, yes. and Jack and his mum had the harp. They put it on the kitchen table and it started to play. Just oh. then, there was a knock at the door. Huh? Oh, that makes sense. Jack answered, and standing there was the police. What? You object to it? I am arresting you for theft, breaking and entering, and worst of all, a giant of murder. You have the right to remain silent. If you refuse that right, anything you can say will be used in a court of a law. Thank you. Midsummer murders. They took Jack away and put him in prison where he was very popular with some of the inmates. And the moral of the story is, just because you haven't got the money, it doesn't mean that you can break into someone else's property and take their things, even if what their magical thing is, is something like a singing ukulele. And you definitely should not murder them. Yes. It's against the law. And it's not right. 
The end. And that was Jack and the Beanstalk, expertly read by Mr. Robert Pierce. And expertly performed by Mr. Ant Payne. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll have another story next time on the Payne and Pierce Moving Picture Show. But we always finish our podcast with the story time. And also now, this is the end of the Payne and Pierce Moving Picture Show as well. But don't worry, if you would like to keep up to date with what else we're doing, you can find us on Facebook, Payne and Pierce Podcast. And on Twitter, Payne and Pierce. And you can check out our website, which is payneandpiercepodcast.co.uk. <laughs> We hope you had a good time with us um, on the Pain and Pierce Moving Picture Show and we really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!